to today's session of the Angigo virtual lecture series. Uh, we'll continue with the uh, data exploration and this time we're doing the continuous variables. The last time that we attempted working on it, we said that there are two types of variables for the continuous variables. The one that is normally distributed, which we call the parametric variable. And then the ones that are not normally distributed or skewed variables, which we call non-parametric variables. So we said that for parametric variables, if you are doing the descriptive statistics, then you describe them as means. Okay, Describing it as means simply means that you have a set of data and then you want to have a summary statistics on that. So you describe them as mean, that is then on the average, mean is the same as the average. So you have a word, one particular uh, figure that you are using to represent the whole group. So let's say if it is ages of those of us in this class, who we'll have so many different types of ages, okay? From Dominic, the oldest, to the latter youngest, okay? We have so many ages, but if we want to just use an estimated summary to represent that diverse age, then we can just say, okay, let's add all and divide by the number. That means that if, let's say, we are putting all the ages together and then we are dividing it equally for each person, how will each person work get in terms of age? So that one, particular figure we are using to represent everybody's what age. So that is what we call what the mean. Now, after we've done that, we are going to get a figure, all right, but that figure is only describing the center of the data, okay? But there will be people whose age may be just as that mean, others whose age may be lower than it, others whose age may be what, higher than that. So, We've said that the average of the data, the ages is this. But we want to provide more information so that anybody that is not in this class will be able to know, well, on the average, this is the age. But how does the individual ages come close or spread around the world, the mean? So we want to see how do we disperse around the mean, our individual age. So let's say that our individual ages are different, different, different ages, but the mean is, let's say, 30. You have some people who are below 30. We have a 22-year-old boy in the class. We have people who are 40 years, others that are catching their retirement age. All of them as part of the class. But we are representing all those groups with what? A mean. So we are describing their age, and we say the mean is what? 30 years. So now we want to provide further information for anybody to know, well, this is the average age, but this is how the people will gather around the average. So we provide what we call a measure of dispersion. And the measure of dispersion in this case, we say the deviation. How does the individuals will deviate from the what? From the mean. So remember what we used to do, you subtract the mean from the every what? Individual number. And then the deviation that you get also, you try to find the average what deviation. But because some of the deviations will be what negative, because those that a mean is bigger than the one you subtracted, you get what a deviation that is what negative. So in order to get rid of those negatives, so that if you add them, they will not reduce the figure. You just multiply them by themselves. That is a square of that. 
okay and then when you finish that then what you do is that you find the square root and then divide by the what the number that gives you what the deviation so in this case every individual deviates from the mean but you are trying to say find an average deviation or a standardized deviation for the data okay so that gives you the fact that the average is let's say 30 so if we do that deviation and let's say we get let's say four then that means that if you add that uh, particular four to the 30 you are getting 34 if you subtract it from the 30 you are getting what 26 now so between 26 and then what 34 becomes a range of the group that are there and this one covers for about 67 of the percent of the of the data now if you multiply that deviation the standard deviation by two in this case you multiply the four by two and then you get what eight if you add it to the 30 you are getting what 38 if you subtract it from the 30 you are getting what 22 so now that gives you a cover for theoretically about 95 percent of the people who are supposed to be in that particular group so that gives you a range that well the mean is actually what 30 but 95 percent of the people there it is fall from 22 to 30 what 38 so by giving you those two figures okay you'll be able to make a judgment of what the particular population we are describing their ages no matter how many they are they can be a million people but still you have a summary statistics of their what of their age group so for those parametric data that is how we express them but unfortunately for some of the data they are such that some of the data they are such that they are dispersed the dispersion is such that it is not um, prudent or it is not possible to represent them with what a mean or an average that will be representative of the what of the data because they will disperse so much about the mean that the mean will actually not represent what the group so such particular data like we said we say they are skip okay so for them like this if you do the deviation the deviation will become big so if you multiply the deviation by two and it is more or equal to the mean straight away you should know that that data it is not what non-parametric so if the data is non-parametric we can choose to let it be non-parametric and then apply non-parametric statistics to that so for non-parametric statistics the descriptives we may opt for what we call the median okay so the median is when we rank the data we are rank the data from smaller to bigger the data that the one that figure that falls in the what in the middle the center of the data becomes what the median and then so the median will give us a summary statistics of what the data that lies in the middle then now again we want to give extra information about how the data disperse around the what the median so with that one of the statistics that you can use is either use the minimum and the maximum so if we say in the middle when you rank the data this is the data that lies there okay but this is the smallest and then what the biggest so that also give you the range at which the data what covers or you may want to use the word interquartile range okay the interquartile range so this is how we describe what non-parametric data whilst for the parametric data the descriptives we are using mean standard deviation okay for the non-parametric we are using median and then what interquartile range or minimum maximum hello yes so there's another measure of dispersion we will deal with when we do the parametrics that is the standard error of the mean but we'll come to that at a later stage so the first thing you need to understand by any data at all that you have is to be able to sort it out and see whether it is parametric or what non-parametric because you want the summary statistics that you are giving to represent the what the data as much as possible 
Now, so what we're going to do today, there are other ways that if data is non-parametric, but still you want to apply parametric statistics to it, there are certain ways that you can transform the data to parametric and then use it. So we'll go back to what we're doing the last time and use the data. Discuss the meaning of the data. No. In some cases, what happens is that it may be just one or two variables that are so far distant from the others. And those, we say they are out of the layer of the world, of the data. So they are outliers. They are outliers. They are outside the range of the data. So sometimes if you deal with the outliers, the data can be what can be described. So let's say that those of us in the class here, our uh, ages are very close. But because we have Dominic, who is far <laughs> beyond his retirement age, <laughs> he alone will pull the data such that the mean does not represent what? The data. So if we decide to either ignore Dominic, okay, <laughs> or prune Dominic's age, then we will have a representative mean of the word, of the data. So we can choose to do that. The other way is that we can choose to transform all of us, our, uh, what do you call it, edges, either by taking a square root of it or by taking a log of it. You know, when you take a square root or a log of something, it becomes, what, smaller. So what does happen is that the intervals become, what, closer. So you have a representative mean for that. But if you take a log of something and you finish calculating the mean and the standard deviation, then you transform the mean and the standard deviation by using what? anti -levels. And if it's a, a square root or something that you took, then you can come and do what? Raising the power of two to get a variable. All right. So we're going to do those few things today. So we have our data. The data that we're using were this one. Hello? Yeah. So going back to use IBM. That is SPSS. So that is our SPSS. which is almost open in here. Let's give ourselves some small time. Right. So like I'm saying, you then just get data and then straight away you start meaning, 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 because you see the mean, it's a continuous variable, so you mean the data. Yeah. F you don't understand what the data represents. You cannot just start and then start meaning them. Okay, so we have this. You know, every time I double click because I don't mean patient a little when it comes to SPSS opening. Good, so straight away, I'll do the easier way to bring the data in here. I'll just copy this one like this and then just transpose and copy this one back what? And then I go like this, come to variable view here and then just paste them. Yeah. So now go for the data itself. Like this, this time around, I'm not touching the top. But so I just come all the way down here up to the end of the data. Go. Okay, let's go back. So I just pick this one, copy that. And then just come and paste it at the data view. So when I do this, I have the data in my SPSS. So now 
let's go and explore the data. You remember what we did there last time? We go to what? Analyze. Then we come to descriptives. And when we are descriptive, we go to what? Explore. So we click on explore. And I will put all of them here. Just click and put all of them here, dependent list. Then we now go to our statistics and decide on what we want. So if you want the outlayers, we keep them. We click on continue. We come to the plots. So when we come here, we are not interested in the stem and leaves. We are interested in the history. And then also box plots. If we want to do the normality testings, we can click on that one. Then we click on OK. Then we click on OK. So if we do that, all the same statistics are supposed to be done, including the two plots that we are interested in. So for all the data, there are no missing variables. Then we come to the individual, that is the mean, and then the standard error of the mean, which I will explain later. The trim mean, that means 5% at both sides have been trimmed. Then we have the median, and then the standard deviation. So you can look at the standard deviation. As soon as you see the standard deviation, this is what? Standard deviation is 15.89. And then the mean is what? 70.94. So if you multiply the standard uh, deviation by 2, that will give you something in the range of what? 30 or 32. Yeah. So it means that if you subtract 32 from 40, uh, 70, you are getting something about what? 38 or something. And if you add it to it, you are getting something in the range of 100 and something. So in actual fact, that will be the range of the weights that covers 95%. All right. So let's continue. Now there is the skewness. Okay. And then later I will show you the hypothesis for skewness, using skewness to uh, ketosis to be able to distinguish whether the data is skewed or not. But one of the easy hypotheses is that the skewness should not be above what one. Yeah. The others are a little bit stringent. That's why you so you can look at the next one. We look at the mean and then the standard deviation. So the mean is one point what six and then the standard deviation is what zero point zero eight. So if you do that you are still going to get one point eight, right? Zero point one eight. So you can see that none of the data that we are having here, that the standard deviation will cause a problem. So the same way for this one also. And the one down there is the same. If we go up for the next one, we have 90, 101, and then what? 14. And then the skewness is small, but the ketosis is large. So we will deal with those things as we go along. Yeah. So now this one gives you the list of the first, highest, and then the lowest five cases. So their positions and their cases you can see for each of the of the variables. So one point. the first five and the last five. That is how it is set. You know, we didn't just choose any of the options, but that is the default options. So the first, highest, and then the last, lowest. Five of them. Five, five each. There used to be five, five. Who know what five, five was? Okay. All right. Let's continue. So on this one, um, yeah. Now we have the normality tests. So we have the Komogorov Smenev. Um, if you look at this one, it means that this data will not pass what normality because 
the p value is less than 0 0.05 but this will pass the hats will pass but the bmr will not pass this will pass so this is less than 0 0.05 yeah it is 0.006 here yeah. then this one will pass but this won't pass then the last one will also will pass now if we come to the Shapiro work none of them will pass because all of them their p-values are less than 0.05 good but we said that look you can take your smen off and drink it all right with komogorov but before you do that and you get intoxicated make sure that you have actually inspected the data with your eye when you have not taken the smen off so look at the data as it's distributed like this and then make a judgment out of it so if you look at this data it is tight the mean is what 70 it lies somewhere here or somewhere so if you want to put even the normality curve on that to help you actually uh, do that visualization you can just double click there um, the graph as soon as you double click any of the results of an SPSS output it becomes activated for what for editing so when you come here what you want is this the normality plots so the distribution plot you just click on that and then you choose which one you want in this case you are interested in what this the normality plot so if you do that you get it so as soon as you do that you can just click on what close so this is the normality plots so that you can actually observe that so when you click outside the box it have effects on the data like this so this is the normality plot you look at the way the data is what is guarded this one actually looks like a normal data for me because majority of them are actually guarded around the peak you can see this is the peak that is where the 70 thing is lying the 70 something that is the mean is somewhere here okay and that means that the people there are the 70 they mean the rest of the people are actually gathering around yeah the other way you can also observe this one is to come and look at a box plot now if you look at a box plot this is what happens with a box plot it shows you the line that is lying in the middle is the mean and then it shows the most widest type of what you call it data sets so in this case the data sets that is crossing the boundaries are 17 and then what 54 so that position the data that is there they are the ones causing the trouble so you can deal with them if you want to deal with them on one or one cases good we look at the other data and this is what we have not so that one too, if you want to do the same thing that we did you can just come and put the normality plots on it then just close okay so if you close it you click on this side it comes on that so you realize that if you look at this one there are some figures that are falling out completely and those figures will be the what the out layers they are skewing up so if you take this data out you realize that you have still have a very tight with data so you can look at this data and deal with them if you want to and then you have a data that will describe the means very well okay so the same way if you come to the box plots which are interested in so you realize that those are the two variables that are here 61 and then what 77 67 and you realize that since 67 is so far away it is a star okay this one is what circle and this one is what a star the further away you go the more you are recognized Abby. Mm -hmm. so the like there is very or low low yeah in this case is very low far lower yeah so, so how come the 17 should after this is showing that it means the 17 the figures there are above, above the mean. they are skewing above the mean and this one they are below no the 17 is not the data it's, it's not the data it's the position the, the position where the data is yeah. all right yeah
So if you come to this one also, the same thing. You can do that if you want to close it and then at the end of the day, click on this one and then you have it like this. So we can go on and on and on and on. So let's try and see how we can deal with some of this uh, out layers. So this one too, you can see there are out layers that are here. So we're going to deal with how, we're going to look at how we can deal with some of these out layers. Okay, so let's take the first one. Let's take the first data set. So the first data set, we have position what? 17 and then what? 54. So we can go back to... That is for for height. Oh, that's sorry. That is for weight. That is for weight. So weight is what seventeen, and then fifty four. So we can come down here and go to the position what seventeen. So at position seventeen, you have this figure that is there. One one eight. Now look at the data and look at all the other data, how they are coming out. So you realize that this one is really very high. Good. Then you move on to the next one. That was 54. That is position 54. 54 is what? 120. So 120 and this one. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to take this one out. Let's say I'm excluding this. But don't forget the figure. Somebody should write it down for me. Yeah. And then I'm taking this one also out. But I can see another problem will come up because of this figure. Okay. So let's say that I'm deleting the out layers out. And then I'll go and redo the test and let's see. So I go back, just record the test. Okay. I record the test. This time around, I'm not interested in all the others. Let them come out. So it's it is weight, rather. Right? Yeah, so I'm not interested in all the others. I'm pulling them out. So that I left with only my weights. So I click on weight. Because I've recorded this, all the other things we have done is that. Good. So I just did for only the weight. Now, look at the, uh, what do you call it? the mean, and then the standard error of the mean, then the standard deviation, okay? And you see, normally when you have very large data, and then you pick one or two or three out like that, it doesn't really affect the data, okay? Uh -huh. So we'll move down like this, and then we see the Komogorov still say it didn't work pass, uh, Shapiro also says it didn't pass. Okay, now let's look at the data again. This is what we are getting. Is there any departure from the first one? Hello? Yeah, so we just click on this one. And this is it. We will compare the two when we finish. And then let's look at the box plots. I realize there is no out layer on it now. That is the box plot. Now let's look at the skewness for this data and then compare it to the old one when the two data sets are there. Okay. Let's go to the skewness. All right. So the skewness now is what? 0.5. Okay. Let's go back to the original one. The original one, the skewness was what? That is weights. So if we wanted weights, so this one, the skewness for weight was what? 0.66. Hello? Yeah. Uh, the mean virtually remain almost the same, 70.9 compared to 70.1. Point four, four two. Okay, I myself want to pick out this data because I think that one too is very large. 
I myself. There is even one eight, so I don't need to worry myself. Okay. Yeah, so I don't think I don't think I need to worry myself. So sometimes you can take out some of the figures and then it may improve or correct askewness if there is any. Okay. Now another way around is this. Now instead of taking out any skewness thing, what we'll do is that we're going to take do transformation of the data. So we want to transform this data into another variable. So we just go to transformation and then when we come here, we just come to compute. So we compute. So now we are putting another uh, data all together. We are transforming into another. So I'll start with log. I want to log weight. So I'm calling the new target data log weight. So log weight, in actual fact, I want to log weight. So these are the mathematical equations and all the other conventional things that are here. So I'll click on mathematics. And then I want the log base 10. So when I click on log base 10 here, I will just put it at the top there. Okay. Then I'll bring in my weights like this. So I'm computing log to the base 10 of what? Of weights. If I click on OK, I should get a new variable that have been computed into the scheme. This one, that is what log weights. I've done it to all the data. Okay. So I have had log 8 now. So now I'm going to compute the descriptive for log 8 so that we'll see. So I come to this side. I go back to explore the data. My interest is in log weight. So I'm really taking this one out and bring the log weight inside. I click on OK. And then it should calculate the data form. Right. So this is the descriptives. There is still one missing data. Oh, that is, I didn't enter that one well. The way I didn't undo well, so that one of the ones I deleted is still out. I will go and do it before I come back to the side. Just now, do you see the skewness of the data? Have you seen it? It has reduced far, far off. Good. So let's go on to the others that we'll find. Now, do you see the Komogoro spinners? What happens? It has passed. Are you getting it? Though we've told you there are inherent problems with that. But I should even tell you that the data is now very tight together. So you see it has passed. You see the Shapiro work? It has also worked. It has also passed. Yes. We are all passed going to the university. Okay. Now see the see the 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 data sets how it is distributed now. You realize that this is becoming more normally distributed bell shape. You get it? Yes. So you realize the data after we took a log of it, it's become very tight. Yeah. So if you go to the other thing, so you see the uh, PP, this ones I normally don't want to go in there, but this one, it is interpreted by the number of data that is on the north, nationally on the line at both sides. Closeness to the line one, and then how they are gathered at both sides. So those ones that are at the top here are supposedly above the mean and those ones that are here are supposedly below the mean. But it's not so informative to me, the QQ and then the QQ plot lots. All right. Then we go to the plots. Now, have you seen that this thing is actually moving to the middle than the other one that we actually have? So when you log data like this, it might correct forward the errors of skewness. So this is what we say we are transforming what the data. So now don't forget that the weight that is there 
it is not the actual weight, but it's the log of the what of the weight. So the mean that you are having here at this time, this mean is not that means that the weight of the people is not one point what eight four, but this one is log one point what eight four. Hello, the standard deviation is not zero point zero nine four. But it is what? Log 0 0.094. That's why you have to be careful. So you can choose to represent the data like this. If you do the descriptive statistics and find the mean and say the mean is log this. Or you can choose to now transform the mean and the standard deviation into uh, what do you call it? the whole numbers again. So you can do that easily in SL. You can do that in the SPSS. But I want to do it in SL and then come back to the SPSS. So if you do data analysis and then you have a lot of data and you are working on it, you have transformed them and you have actually done their means on them. All that you do is that once you bring them into SL, you know how you do it, right? It is what? 1.8. I hope so. Yeah, 1.84, that is the mean. The standard deviation is what, 0 0.094. So the standard deviation is 0 0.094. So these are all log. So if you want the actual values here, means that anytime you find a log of base something, if you raise, uh, what do you call it, that thing to the power of that base, you have to raise the results to the power of that thing, the base you use in doing the distance, you get the same, uh, what do you call it, that is the antelope. Okay, so you come to equal to, and you are interested in power. You are interested in power, so you click on power, not exponent. Okay, power, not exponent. So power. So the base that we did was what? Base 10. We did log to base what? 10. So log base 10. If you use the natural log, then that one, you are going to use the exponent. So log base 10, comma, that is the number. Raise to the power this figure. You click what? Okay. So this is the weights, the average weights. And if you want the standard deviation, this is the standard deviation. Hello? Okay. Yes. Dela, you are shaking your head. Oh, that is so tough. Yeah. That is just a film. That thing you like, you like so much. <laughs> the video I just rendered, you are you are doing so wonderful with autofill. All of a sudden you are forgotten. Why well, you are telling us? To... You didn't mention standard deviation for the first one before autofill. Let's try. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, the the background. It's the same formula. It's the same formula. It's look at it. Look at it. The formula here is what. Power into bracket 10. And then what? K11. This is K11. Are you getting it? Now. We are trying to do some basic mathematics there to translation. Okay. Basic mathematics means that if you have. <laughs> the man that she has done. No, yeah. Yes. How it's but that's what I'm surprised of. So. <laughs> okay. So if you if you are here, if you have this, and you are dragging this one, so I could have just put this one here. Come to your code, then type P O W or P O. I get my what my power. I get in it. So I need the number before I raise it to the power. And the number was base, what, 10, because I did log 10. So I just bring comma, 
and I come and put the power. The power is this. So I just click on OK. So 1.24. So you see the deviation is also very small. Compared to the untransformed one, let's look at the untransformed one, the deviation. So let's just go up here. Weights. Okay. Let's go to weights at the top there. The untransformed data for weights. Hello. So the untransformed data for weight, you can even get it from here. Yeah. So you see the untransformed one, the mean was what? 70 points. Point what? 94. The deviation was what? 50. So now the 15 deviation has reduced to what? 1 point. And then the mean has now become what? 60 what? 69 point. Hello. Yeah, the mean is not very far from the old one. Okay. But the standard deviation has considerably reduced. Hello. Yeah. So this is one way that you can transform data and then uh, correct for deviations. So in order to transform data, you want to touch the data, then take it as a non-parametric data. You can also present it as a non-parametric data where you use the median and then the intercortical ranges. You realize all those things were calculated for you here. So it's up to you to choose which one you want to use to present your things. Like this one, the median was calculated. You see maximum and then was minimum interquartile range and all that was calculated. So you could choose any of them that you want to use. But the truth of the matter is that in actual fact, this data we are dealing with, the weight data, was not actually a skewed data. If you do the actual inspection, it was not so much of a skewed data. That is why even the transform mean is very close to the ones, the actual mean. Hello. Yeah. So that is one way of transforming data. You can just find the root of it, or you can just choose to cut some of them. Now, the cutting out, that is if your data set is not so plenty, uh, Deleting some of them on time makes the data become too small. Okay? Ignoring them on time makes something so. Uh, then sometimes uh, you will need the, especially when you come to splicing the data into groups and stuff. There may not be enough in a certain group. So if you end up deleting them, they might not work. But if it is a few of them, that will not actually affect the power. You can actually take them out. The other way around is to try and transform them. For example, find a log of them, okay? And then do the analysis. Then when you finish, what you do is that you transform the results back into it with an anti-log, and then you get the results there. Any questions? So dealing with what we call skill data. One way is what? Cutting out the out layers. The other way is what? Transforming the data. There are other ways also that you can deal with it. The geometric mean, the harmonic mean, and all that. Yeah. So we'll deal with them as we go along. So they all try to correct the data. For example, like you see the trim mean. The trim mean has cut what? The extremities of the data. It has ignored what? 5% of it. So it has calculated the 95% of the data and then ignore the higher 2.5 and then the lower what 2.5 and then calculated the mean from 95%. So if you look at this way, you see the trim means are there. Sometimes the means may be uh, what do you call it, skewed, but the trim means may be okay. You could use that. Sometimes you could present the geometric means, okay? So you could present the geometric means. Other times you could present, uh, what do you call it? The harmonic means. So these are all ways of dealing with 
um, skill to data, skillness. So for this one, you realize that if you trim the skill, uh, this thing, it gets to what? 60, uh, 70 points. One minute, yeah. Which is getting closer to the one we did the transformation. So all these are available that you could do to correct your, your data. Okay, so without much ado, and I don't, uh, it has been one, it has been one tiring week to this Friday with multiple headaches. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, we, we are happy that those people, those twins that had coincidental headaches because because I heard the p value was not significant. <laughs> it only occurred by chance. <laughs> it only occurred by chance. We are happy that <laughs> we are okay. Today they have all been healed. <laughs> but uh, the heal that's what the, that's what that's what the healing is significant so they are back with us. So we'll meet God willing tomorrow. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank <laughs> you.